the power of video. This is what we're going to explore today. And Jeff and uh, uh, Nicola already know the punchline, but they'll, they'll keep you in suspense. So what we have today is an opportunity to take a look at the power of video. And I'm going to share with you uh, my keynote slide here. And um, I, I'm going to just take you through this, share the screen. And this is really challenging. With Zoom, there's times I, I will lose my mouse control. It's interesting. So um, I'm going to go to play here. And there we go. So power video. And we are recording. We are live. And I'm asking the question, can, you, can a picture say more than a 1,000 words? OK. I've got a task that I want for you folks to do. I want you to consistently and repeatedly fold a shirt as quickly as you can. You've got a thousand shirts that were delivered to your volunteer organization. You've got a hundred volunteers. You've got to come up with a plan for folding a shirt as quickly as possible. And you've got to teach your hundred volunteers to do it. You've got this big massive shipment of a thousand shirts. How are you going to do that? Okay. What I'm going to do now folks is I'm going to stop the share and I'm going to break you into breakout rooms. And I'm going to automatically manually put you all in the same breakout room. Um, and the reason is it, it, it's we're simulating this, okay? One, One breakout room. Per... <laughs> yeah, no, no, you're all going in the same breakout room, okay? So I'm going to give you I'm going to give you two minutes to come up with a plan here, right? I'll actually, give you about less than a minute. Or go. Hello. I don't think we're in our breakout room yet, are we? Nope. Not yet. There we go. Here it comes. Oh, join. Okay, so for the folks who are watching this recording, I've broken everybody off into the breakout room and they're going to talk about how they're going to fold this particular t-shirt multiple, multiple times. And we'll we'll see when they come back. And I'm going to bring them back in about another minute or so. Okay, everybody's back. So have you all figured out how you're going to fold those thousand t-shirts? Suggestions? Yeah. Bryson has it all figured out. Okay, what are we going to do? <laughs> we all decided that we needed to have conformity as to how we're going to, to, to fold all of these shirts. But we can't just let everybody do as they want to. Okay. So how are you going to teach everybody to fold the shirts? What's the plan? Well, I think we're we're gonna we're gonna do a demo because you said we've got a hundred a hundred volunteers, right? Yeah. Right. So we gotta have we gotta have one person show them the exact way to to do it. They each get a shirt in their hand. They they repeat while we do it. If there's a hundred volunteers, they're only folding ten shirts per. Okay. Um, so then they watch you. You watch what they do. <laughs> you walk down the hundred volunteers and make sure it's done right, and then they do nine more each, and you're done. <laughs> cool. Train the trainer. Okay. Or, or, uh, so you are you going to create the demo yourself? Are you going to physically do the demo, or are you going to film the demo? What, what's... what if we sent them a video beforehand? Ah, the video. <laughs> what if you sent them a video? Good idea. Oh, good idea. Give, okay. Give them something to follow so they know what to do. Thanks for the segue into that, uh, Jeff. I'm just going to bring up a video. <laughs> um, I'm going to share my screen. Let's let's see how this is going to play. Sometimes this works. On, on, okay, so let's see. What if we did this? So when I do this face to face. It's interesting. I, I walk around the room and I actually give people t-shirts. <laughs> Usually I have groups of, you know, four or five. And when I do this in a live setting, I get, there's, there's t-shirts. And I walk around the room and I tell everybody, you can use any resources you want. You can use any resources you want. Any resources. Anything you want. Anything at all. And I hold my phone. I, you can use any resources you want. And inevitably, if the group is a group of adults, Everybody comes up with a plan. They're going to do, do a demo and so on and so forth. If it's high school students or junior high students, in five seconds, there's a kid in my face going, it's right here, man. <laughs> Here's the video. What's next? <laughs> Interesting. Interesting. Power video. You don't have to create your own videos. 
there's chances are there's a video out there. Think about that. Yes, but one of the questions I had in my mind, Wayne, was is one thing that hasn't been mentioned so far is copyright. So did I break copyright by showing you the video on YouTube? I don't know. No, I didn't. How do we know that as, as somebody that's just starting out as to, without going into great detail, because I know how to check copyright, but how, how do we know that you've selected things that are not copy, like copyright? It's on YouTube. Oh my goodness. What no, about seriously? It's it's on YouTube. Um, what about the music thing? I know music when you download music off of YouTube or you try and use music off of YouTube, there's a copyright for yeah. artists, but not yeah. for video. Yeah. So what you do is you show people the video from YouTube. Oh, perfect. And so if you're copyright, using YouTube, copyright is a boogeyman. Copyright? Listen, copyright is a boogeyman. It is, it, you know, the boogeyman is going to scare you because it's in the closet or underneath the bed. Um, for educational use, there is, is something called fair use for educational yeah, use. Yeah. Yeah. We spend way too much time talking about copyright. Think about it. If it's on YouTube, play it, use it. And it's okay. You don't have to worry about copyright as long as you are using it for educational purposes. If it's on YouTube and you play it off of YouTube, it's fine. Yeah, because when you play it off of YouTube, you're recognizing its origin and, and where it's from. Whereas if you, <clears throat> if you pulled it off of YouTube and edited it out so that there was nothing right. left of that recognition, I think that would get For you sure. in trouble. But otherwise, played off of YouTube, you're fine, right? Well, I'm going to show you a video here in a little bit that I actually pulled off of YouTube. And I pulled out a small clip of it. And I am attributing it to YouTube. I'll, I'll let you know where I got it from. I tell you exactly where I got it from. And the reason that I don't have the whole clip here or don't go to YouTube is because it actually, it's a lot easier for me to do that. So um, I don't let something like copyright get in the way. If, you, <clears throat> if you're working in an educational setting, um, regardless of what your librarian says at, at your institution, uh, the this is just a, it's an issue that gets overblown. It really does. Like right now, we've just spent two or three minutes talking about you know, an issue. Okay. But, and and you've, uh, been, you've, been conditioned, you've been conditioned by your institution to believe, oh, it's over. You know, anyways, seriously, boogeyman. Boo. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay, let's move on. Okay, so now let me ask a question. Let me ask a question. I'm going to bring something else up here. Share my screen. Okay, quick question. What is the most popular search engine in North America? Google. Other thoughts? So we got one vote, Google. Safari? Yeah, Saf probably Safari. Safari, search engine? Mm. Search engine. Oh, sorry, no, that's a browser. Not, not, yeah. yeah, it's a browser. Oh. So search engine, what's the most popular search Google engine? Google Chrome, I'll add to that. Internet Explorer, Safari. Firefox. Let, let, me, let me qualify that. So the most popular search engine in North America is, um, is Google. Now, what's the most popular search engine for people 18 years of age and under? Ooh. Um, I'd still say Google. Any other thoughts? 18 YouTube. years of age. YouTube. Is YouTube yeah. a search no, engine? Nobody can say that YouTube is a search engine. I think you could you could use it for searching. You can use it for searching, but it's not a search engine. Jeff, I Nicholas. use. Uh, well, I would almost. Yeah, I would agree. Like it's not technically a search engine, but I guess it depends where people go for their information. Um, Sorry, Darlene. But, YouTube yeah. is the most popular search engine for. 18 year old, uh, 18 year olds and under. Okay. Let me, let me ask another question. What is the second most popular search engine in North America for everybody? Facebook. It's probably, you know what? It's probably Facebook or it might no. even be Amazon for shopping. No, this for Those everybody. Search engines. Like the true blue. But, but, but theoretically neither is YouTube. YouTube is a exactly. search engine. I'm sorry. What, what is a search engine? What is a search engine? 
It's where you look for things. Uh, Search. Yes. So is it like uh, e eBay or Amazon? No, YouTube. YouTube is the second most popular search engine in North America. Oh, nice. <laughs> Seriously, YouTube is a search engine. Amazon gets used as a search engine, okay? Uh, Facebook, not so much. Facebook is a social media site, and you're only going to be limited to what you can find in terms of that. But when people are looking for information, YouTube is where they go. If you're a kid, 18 years of, old or 18 years of age or younger, you go to YouTube. Well documented, right? YouTube is now regarded as a search engine. Clear date on this, okay? That's very interesting. Yeah, it is. And, and the reason I'm pointing this out is that YouTube is an enormously powerful tool. Why is that? Because some people would argue that we have been programmed to pay attention to media. Listen to this. Let's, uh, let's see if this is going to play. <clears throat> Can you hear this guy? Barely. Okay, that didn't work. So that's good, good to know. Good to know. So sometimes a YouTube video will work, sometimes it won't. So this guy by the name of Medina wrote a book called Brain Rules, and he makes the argument that we have been evolved, we have evolved or we've been designed to be in motion and uh, near constant motion and we pay attention to things. And he makes the argument that if you were to design the worst imaginable environment for learning, um, it would be a classroom. Right. The reason that we are so attracted to video is that we have evolved to pay attention to movement and to motion. Video appeals to our animal instincts is the argument. So most evolutionary biologists would agree with this Medina guy. He wrote a book called 12 Rules. And he says that movement is something that catches our attention. Now, that, don't take my word for this on, 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 in terms of movement, but think about this. If you have ever worked in an environment where you are scanning the horizon. When I was a young man, I was in the military and I was doing reconnaissance training. We were taught to scan the horizon by moving our head left and right. Why? Because we would capture motion out of our peripheral vision. So we've evolved to capture motion all over the place because it's, it's supposedly to keep us alive, right? We got to notice that saber tooth tiger. So we've evolved to notice motion. And movement is something that just appeals to everybody and younger people love it. So video is extremely, extremely powerful, okay? So the argument I'm making is that it isn't just something that we do that we like, it's the way that we have been designed or evolved, okay? Very, very important. Let me, let me go back to a couple other things I, I wanna talk to you about. And that is um, how do you actually use video in an instructional setting? Right? How how does that work? Let me let me just explain this power of video. Uh, so if we combine video on a website and turn it into a how-to, it can be extremely powerful. Okay. So I'm just going to share this again here, and um, so how-tos. Let me give you an example. Uh, my boys race professionally and they're always working on their bikes and they're always preparing stuff. And it's not uncommon to see them with their tablet in the garage or even on, on a race site and looking at a video, taking a look at how they're gonna actually do something, okay? And so they'll take a look at a video, but when you combine a video explaining how to do something with a website that actually takes you through the steps, it's amazing, okay? So you've got the video that provides the overview, and then you've got the step-by-step -step procedure on the website that gives you the details. Because one of the biggest challenges, I don't, know, I don't know about you folks, but one of the most frustrating things about YouTube videos is that you've got to watch 12 of them to get a sense of how something works because everybody gives you a part of the puzzle. But if you were to combine a really good video as an overview and then have step-by-step -step instructions with pictures, it's powerful, very powerful. Okay, so you're not only using the power of video, but you're also using the power of pictures. Does this make sense to anybody? Do you see, has anybody seen a website like this? Oh, totally. Yeah. Total visual. Yeah. I've, uh, I just, I, um, I use YouTube every day, every single day to, to fix everything that I have and, or figure out problems. <laughs> and um, I run into that 
uh, problem all the time. The video is doesn't doesn't quite do it, so you got to watch multiple. I haven't yeah. come across any websites that have photos or anything like that. Not yet. Yeah, well, not a lot of people do that. Not a lot of people combine the video with a website, right? And it, if they can do that, it makes it even all that much better, right? We do that in our nursing program with yeah. all of the all of the nursing skills. Yep. So we've got step-by-step -step instructions and <clears throat> linked in with photos and videos. All on one website? Um, yes. Interesting. Well, it's yeah. usually within your LMS, right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So you would find that type of a scenario on a learning management system like Moodle or Blackboard or Desire to Learn. Um, you'll find it in the DIY community on, on the website. On, on on the internet do you know what the diy community is yeah yeah do it yeah. yourself right there is a, there's a few places where you will find some decent instructions but not often most people do a really crappy job of this right you know, most people do a really lousy job but if you combine this it can be extremely powerful extremely the van life, powerful the van life community has done an amazing job of uh getting their diy stuff oh yeah on, on yeah. youtube like on yeah YouTube. actually it's interesting you mentioned the van life. My my older son is he bought an old um, handy uh, handy bus like a wheelchair bus, okay. and <laughs> he's converting it. Well, he races enduro and downhill, and so this is his this is his travel bus here in North America, and so he's just building it out right now. And so he spent he spent the last several months on the 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 uh, that community. What did you call it? The uh, what community? Van life. That? Van life, van yeah. Life. yeah, yeah, van life, yeah, yeah, the whole van life community. I've been watching. I just, some of them. Yeah. I just built a van last last summer. I did uh, everything was done with YouTube. The whole that's so funny you say that because, yeah, I use YouTube to do all my electrical, my solar, my water, everything. Cool. Hell yeah. Yeah, yeah it I'll works. I'll show you guys a photo of the van. It's pretty cool. Cool. Yeah, I'd like to see that. That's great. Cool. So, think about this. What are your thoughts? So what are the advantages of using video and media? It's visual learning. Ah. Why? How, how, do, how does that help? How does it enhance? Well, most people are visual learners. And when you are seeing how it is to go through something, it's much easier than trying to comprehend words on a page. You can show the example. It yeah. makes it a lot easier to understand. Exactly. When I think cool. back to your back to your uh, comment about you know how we're built, it, it just appeals to us subconsciously. Yep. Engagement. Excellent. Yep. Other thoughts. What are what are also some of the advantages? Engagement. It appeals to us. Anything else? Time. Yeah. Saves a time. ton of time. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Also, anybody can do it. We can upload stuff to YouTube, right? Vimeo, all those different places. Right. You can relate now, to it a little easier. Yeah. All that cool stuff. Cool. So deeper, broader communication, mobile all the time, anywhere, right? It's on our phones, YouTube, Vimeo. Anybody watch Ted talks? Oh, I'm a sucker for those. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, I could kill a day on Ted. <laughs> so that there's some disadvantages. You can yeah, time. There's, there, there's also the time suck of video. <laughs> that might be just more of a gender thing. So advantages is that it's all over the place, right? Any questions about this um, this mini lesson? What okay. is your definition of synchronous? What we're doing right now. Real time. No, no more than no more, no less. Ah. Whatever you put on the screen. Ah, okay. So if you and I were on a phone call, we're not on a screen, would that be synchronous? It's real time no. communication. Yeah, no, it is. It is yeah. a phone call. Synchronous. Yeah. 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 Synchronous is real time. People doing stuff together, right? Collaborating in real time. If two people are working in a room and they're both doing something different, are they working synchronously or asynchronously? Are they working? They're working synchronously. Nope. No. Oh, different things? Working yeah. on different subjects? Oh, they, they could even be working on the same thing, but if they aren't working together, you can be in the same room and be working asynchronously. The synchronous, the aspect of synchronous collaboration is the real-time engagement on the, in the same activity. 
So watching a YouTube video to learn how to do something would be asynchronous. Um, if you're in the same, if, if we're all watching it at the same time and we start talking about it, the actual watching of it is, is something you do individually. But if we come together and talk about it, that's the synchronous communication. Right. So okay. we, we move in and out of synchronous and asynchronous. But the, the key thing about synchronous collaboration is taking advantage of space and time to be able to have that level of engagement. Did that, did that answer your question, darling? Great question, though. Oh, way. totally, totally. But what, when do you decide to go asynchronous to synchronous? Like, what, when is the best platform to do that? What do you mean by platform? So let, let's deal with the time. Um, okay. So if you have the ability, like we have right now, to talk and to engage and to have question and answer, well, this is the perfect time for us to do the things that we did. I, I didn't spend a lot of time lecturing you. You know, I can deliver content to you in a variety of ways. It's better to deliver content to you in, in an asynchronous fashion because you probably would want more time to be able to digest and work with it and massage the ideas. So where I, I like to use synchronous collaboration is where you need to build community, you need to build collaboration, you, you can have that immediacy of question and answer. It's a judgment call. It's a judgment depends call. Depends on yeah. Depends on what how you want to deal with the the problem. Yep. Yeah. I guess not the problem, but whatever you're trying to teach depends on how you want to teach it. Well, it it and that's that's an interesting question. Did I, did I teach you anything today? Yes. Yeah, you taught me some things for sure. Hmm. Did did I really teach you some things, or did I just expose you to some ideas? No. Oh, de definitely yeah. exposed. Yeah, so I, well, I created an environment. I invited you into an environment and I threw out some ideas. Yeah. And, you know, I, I, even, I even ruffled a few feathers. You know, we had a debate about whether or not YouTube was a search engine, right? Darlene's <laughs> not going to trust me. She had to verify. So she's looked it I up. I did. Which is I great, did. which is wonderful. Yes, yes. <laughs> which search engine did you use, Darlene? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you, did you Google? use YouTube? <laughs> Google. Uh, other questions, other thoughts about this whole scenario, synchronous, asynchronous, and, and just the whole presentation. Did, did, did it, has anybody done the instructional skills workshop here? Did you notice anything that I used in this method here? No, because when I did the PID, that was 2011. Hmm. Uh, instructional skills, is that another PID program? That yeah. You offer? Well, it's another okay. course. It's the instructional skills workshop Sorry, yeah. is referred to as the um, 3220. It's a course oh, where you that's do all the little mini you do anybody do the course we do three mini lessons yeah yes yeah we i just took you through something called the bops model mm -hmm. okay so can you give us an explanation of what the bops model is because you talk about it all the time ah, and i haven't looked it up actually you know what i think that might be something that would be really good for you to engage in asynchronously hmm i wonder mm -hmm. Hint, wink, nudge, nudge. <laughs> guess what? Guess what? My asynchronous session is going to be about. I, I've got a site on the BOPS model where I explain what I just did here and I break down uh, how this whole scenario went. Okay, and so you're going to see that because um, what the reason I'm going to do it this way is that you have to actually take a look at the pieces that I've done. You're going to look at this video. You're going to look at the BOPS model, and then you're going to apply it to your own synchronous session. And that's something you want to do in your own time, right? That isn't something that works well, me talking to you about it, because you have to actually digest it. And you have to be able to go back and scroll through, take a look at the video, take a look at the different sections, and then work with it. Interesting. Cool. Okay. You put some thoughts into our heads, that's for sure. Hmm.